Hello, everybody, and welcome to Iceberg to Go, your daily dose of Pittsburgh Penguins news and analysis. You can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from. The Penguins, they put together a nice performance last night against the Carolina Hurricanes with a 4-1 to one victory, two empty net goals, helped make that look a lot different than it actually was in game. The Hurricanes, they came to play in this one, but the Penguins goaltending stepped up big time. They also got some nice contributions from a Wilkes-Barre line filled with Jonathan Gruden, Yessa Pugliarvi, and Sam Poulin making his 2024 debut with the Penguins at the NHL level. A solid performance from them, a three-point night for Sidney Crosby on the return of Jake Gensel. And that is where the headline stood last night. Jake Gensel's return to Pittsburgh for the first time since being traded to the Carolina Hurricanes back on March 7th ahead of the NHL's trade deadline. He returns. He gets a nice video, a standing ovation. He puts together a pretty solid performance for the Hurricanes as well. Six shots on goal in just over 21 minutes of ice time. He nearly scored on multiple occasions against the Penguins. He was certainly on his game. But a lot of the headlines now are circulating around what he had to say post-game in the locker room. Gensel said, quote, my intention was to stay. They thought there was a better decision. They, presumably being Kyle Dubas and the Pittsburgh Penguins organization, but that quote in and of itself didn't sound like Jake Gensel to me. That sounded more like Mike Gensel and Ben Hankinson, his dad and his agent. And this is where the business side of hockey crashes into the on-ice side of hockey because Jake Gensel's on an expiring contract. That much we have known for the entire season. And as we've known, there hasn't been a whole lot of traction, or at least before the trade, there wasn't a whole lot of traction between the Gensel camp and the Penguins camp when working on an extension. And to some extent, many believe that there really wasn't that much of a sense of urgency on the Penguin side to get Jake Gensel extended. Now, you can believe what you want, but with the quote that Gensel put out there yesterday, my intention was to stay. They thought there was a better direction. I put out on Twitter, there are three sides to every story. This is definitely one of them. Gensel's camp thinks that the Penguins didn't really want him back or at least didn't want him to the level that he expected that there to be a desire. The Penguins probably didn't want to pay what Gensel was asking for. And that's where a lot of these discussions have it. And that's where a lot of this discussion probably was, but we'll never know for sure what the details of this breakup is between Gensel and the Penguins. But if you were somebody that was holding out hope that they traded him away, got a haul, and he's just going to come right back home after free agency opens on July 1st, this might, put a dagger into your heart because it doesn't seem I didn't believe it, but to begin with, but now it certainly doesn't seem like there's much left between the bridge of the Gensel camp and the Penguins camp. It seems like a lot of that has been burned. Now you talk about the direction, or at least Gensel talked about the direction the Penguins want to head. It's pretty interesting that it kind of mirrors the direction that the Washington Capitals took last season. They traded off every single one of their pending UFAs that the market would take. Penguins, it might not seem like it because they only traded off three players, one of them being an American Hockey League goaltender, the other one being a seventh defenseman in Chad Ruweedle, but they traded off the pending unrestricted free agents that they had, the ones that they knew they weren't going to re-sign or that they weren't able to get a contract with, such as Jake Gensel. So that's the same direction as the Washington Capitals. A Washington Capitals team that, if you look at the standings right now, and if you look at the wild card race right now, seem to be in prime position to, one year later, get back into the postseason. So I don't hate that. You look at the Penguins and the Capitals and the Sidney Crosby and Alex Ovechkin era, they've long been on the same playing field. They've long been on the same trajectory with these two generational stars peaking at the same time. The Capitals had President's Trophies. The Penguins had Stanley Cups, but they always clashed in 2016, 2017, and 2018 in the conference semifinals en route to Stanley Cups for the respected team. So they've always kind of been 
on that same trajectory. The one time it diverted was last season. The Capitals took the approach of let's get younger. Let's trade off some of these pending unrestricted free agents. Let's trade off some of these bigger names, some fan favorites, a la Garnett Hathaway, a la Dmitry Orlov. I believe I'm missing somebody else that they traded away last season, but you come into this season, a la Anthony Mantha. They cut bait with him after a couple of seasons. You know, they're trying to get younger and turn over the roster into this new era while still attempting to give Alex Ovechkin the best shot possible at surpassing Wayne Gretzky's all-time goal record. The Penguins, on the other hand, decided to keep their cards close to their vest, and they decided to try to tweak around the group they already had here. Capitals moved on, went to get younger. Penguins said, let's try this one more time, and it didn't work. Caps, by hook or by crook, They're looking like a playoff team right now. And the Penguins are looking like a team that collectively has a tee time set up for the day after that final game of the regular season. So now the Penguins appear ready to get right back on the same playing field or right back on the same trajectory, right? Same plan as the Washington Capitals. Kyle Dubas has mentioned on multiple occasions his desire to make this team younger coming into the year. Penguins, oldest team in the National Hockey League for the second consecutive season. They held that title throughout the majority of the season up until the trade deadline, and now I believe they're tied for last place or just under last place in the oldest in the NHL, but they're going to try to continue to move that pendulum in the other direction. If you look at what Bob Grove tweeted before yesterday's game, six players in the Penguins lineup were under the age of 25 last night. Seven were under the age of 25 against the Colorado Avalanche. They're trying to get their younger guys into the lineup and making a difference. And we saw is, you know, as early as last night, yes, a Jonathan Gruden, Sam Poulin as that fourth line certainly looked like it had a lot of life. Now, it was one game. It was a game against the Carolina Hurricanes in which the styles of speed meshed up a little bit. I think that fourth line, even though Young does bring a little bit of a physical edge, Gruden had the the Edgar Snyder hit of the game, whatever you want to call it, ended up going out and getting into a fight because of it, which that's a whole other story for a whole other day. But the point is, Penguins looking to get younger even if it means getting rid of some fan favorites, some guys that have been around, some guys that have been integral to your team in years past, you need to get younger. And right now, that was at the expense of Jake Gensel, but I don't believe he is going to be the last. You go into this offseason, you see a Jeff Carter, while Kyle Dubas continues to, in the media, not close the door on Jeff Carter, I have to imagine that the door is going to be pretty closed on a guy like Jeff Carter. Maybe a Matt Nieto doesn't get an opportunity in Pittsburgh. He never got a fair shake, but maybe they move on from him with that one year remaining on his contract. Does Lars Eller stick around through the offseason? Does Riley Smith? Does Ricard Raquel? These are all names of players that could face a similar fate to Jake Gensel coming up in the offseason. The only difference being they had years left on their contract, making them more difficult to move at the trade deadline. That's all still to come, but the core principles are the same between the Capitals and what the Penguins might be looking to do. Get younger, sell off pieces that you know are not going to be part of this rebuild, that you know are not going to be part of the long-term solution. Keep the main cards, Crosby, Malkin, Latang, Carlson, and I'll throw Brian Rust and Tristan Jari in there. They're probably going to keep those guys. That's who I would say is probably the safest, and maybe Pedersen as well, just simply because he's the only guy on the team that's good at playing defense. But everybody else is probably on the chopping block in order to get younger. You look at what the Capitals have, a majority young, inexperienced team with a couple of veterans that are still sticking around to learn them on how to play successfully, on how to continue to perform down the stretch in these playoff races. That's your Ovechkins. That's your Carlson's. That's your TJ Oshies. That's your Tom Wilson's. Those guys are still there, but the majority of that team, Dylan Strome, they went a little bit younger. Uh, Sonny Milano, they went younger. Hendricks LaPierre, they went younger. Connor McMichael, they went younger. Martin Faravari, I feel like he's been around for a while, but younger. Nonetheless, they've gone younger. The only thing the Penguins won't do that would mirror the Washington Capitals. They're not going to fire their well-respected coach 
for a young and unproven one. The Capitals fired Peter Laviolette last offseason. They bring in Spencer Carberry. And again, the method may not be pristine, right? For a long time this season, I was saying the Capitals weren't anything. A lot of people around the league were saying the Capitals weren't much. And the Capitals themselves, statistically, were not very much. But Carberry has galvanized those guys. And with the opening of a weak wild card system, this year in the Eastern Conference, they've taken advantage. They're playing hockey well at the right time, and they're in position, or at least pole position, to make the Stanley Cup playoffs. That's the one thing that I don't see the Penguins doing. Unless Mike Sullivan gets fed up and doesn't want to do it, I don't think the Penguins are going to fire Mike Sullivan. So the coaching change is the one thing they won't do. But what they do have in exchange is a better cadre of star players. You look at the leader defying aging. Ovi Crosby. They're both on the same playing field as far as I'm concerned. Ovi had a bad start to the season. He's still going to be a 30 goal scorer from what it seems to be because of this late run. They have a number two that's losing traction. Nick or Nick Backstrom has played eight games this year, has one point in those eight games this year, might not play again. Evgeny Malkin, for everybody that's upset about Evgeny Malkin, Look at Nick Backstrom. It's unfortunate because it's due to injuries, but Evgeny Malkin is healthy. He has played this season, and while it hasn't been up to snuff, up to standards, he still has a handful, and by I mean handful, I mean a large handful. Let me look at the exact, the exact points, excuse me, because he has actually had, statistically, not as bad of a season as it appears when you end up watching it, but he has 53 points in 71 games. Not up to Malkin standards, but he's still going to be a 20-goal scorer. He's still going to be probably roughly around the 60-point mark. And as a second-line center, that's something that you can live with if the rest of your team starts to come around. And that's what Kyle Dubas is going to work on in the offseason. And then the Capitals still have that defender chugging along in John Carlson. The Penguins, they have that in Chris Letang. And they have Eric Carlson if he's able to catch his footing and be more so what he was last season than what he is this season in year two with the Penguins. So the Penguins, they're mirroring the Washington Capitals, at least on the outside looking in at the early stages. It looks like the Penguins are mirroring what the Washington Capitals did last season. We'll see if they're able to get similar results. I think they're set up in a better position than the Washington Capitals were. I think goaltending Probably a little bit more trustworthy in Pittsburgh than it was in Washington this year. Charlie Lindgren has obviously had a pretty good season, but Darcy Kemper has struggled. I think Tristan Jari and Alex Nedeljkovic, if that is the goaltending tandem heading into next season, I think that is a leg up that the Penguins have on this Washington Capitals team. So is it possible? Yeah. For the Penguins to turn the ship around, get back in the postseason next year? Yeah, it's possible. We saw the Washington Capitals just do it. Just now just this season. They're doing it at this moment. So is it possible? Yes, that's the plan moving forward. And that is what Jake Gensel was referring to by they thought there was a better direction. Again, I think that is not only co throwing cold water on the potential return. I think that is a little bit of out the door, salty, you know, sour grapes, sour apple, whatever you want to call it. it Jake Gensel is not happy about the way the situation went. It didn't go in his favor. And now he's complaining about it. I didn't see that coming, didn't have that on my bingo board, but hey, it's the business side of hockey. He has every right to do it. I just thought it was a lame move the day after or the night right after a game that the organization that brought you up really went all out for, you know, getting you back in the building and honoring what you did over your eight years in Pittsburgh. But, you know, who am I to judge? I just feel like that was the wrong move to make, but I like the direction they're going for one. And I've seen success in a different city, in Washington. That's what I bring to the table here. And I think the Penguins can emulate that and probably, as they've done over the last 20 years, do it better than what the Capitals have done. But that's going to do it for this episode of Iceberg to Go. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Jake Gensel's comments. Did I take them a little bit more harshly than other people took them? Or am I right along with what you believe? hearing that comment from Jake Gensel. Let me know in the comment section, but remember you can always find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from.